Good morning and welcome to our service for the 3rd of December, Advent Sunday. So, on this first Advent Sunday, let us enter into the radiance of God's presence and bring all our hopes and expectations before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, on whom all hope is founded and on whom we wait. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. And we turn our thoughts now to our confession. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. And just a moment for reflection. And our prayer of confession. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. The Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. The Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences for the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. And the peace. In the tender mercy of our God, the dayspring from on high shall break upon us to give light to all who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let's pray for peace for ourselves, our families and friends, our neighbourhoods, our nation and the whole world. Our first reading comes from 1 Corinthians Chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, says Paul. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 37. And Jesus is speaking. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. But in those days following that distress, 
The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows at dawn. If he comes suddenly... Do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone. Watch. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. So some of you may be aware that today, Advent Sunday, marks the beginning of the Church New Year. Church diaries run from the beginning of Advent through to Christ the King. The seasonal provisions in the prayer book, the collects and blessings, etc. are all laid out starting in Advent. So I've had to go all the way back from page 426 to page 376 in my common worship book. When Advent starts and we begin to look forward to celebrating the birth of Jesus, that's the start of our new year. So, who's looking forward to Christmas? Presents, cards, family gatherings, food and drink, church, it's all wonderful. But some of us are probably more or less fed up with Christmas already, as the shops and websites have been worrying us about it since October. But now I declare that we are officially allowed to be getting ready for Christmas. I do not wish to hear from those of you who did all your Christmas shopping in the January sales, have a full Christmas dinner for 25 people all ready to go in your freezer and have sent all your cards out weeks ago. The rest of us will be getting started on sending the cards, buying the presents, thinking of where we will spend the day, preparing the food, and, I hope, considering the coming of Jesus as a baby to a poor stable, a baby who was going to do wonderful things. So, slight change of subject. What have we been seeing and hearing on the news recently? Destruction and many civilian deaths in Israel, Gaza, Ukraine and Sudan, terrorist attacks, mass shootings in the US, fake news all over the place, a cost of living crisis more worrying now as the weather gets colder and we need our heating on, the NHS struggling with huge waiting lists, food banks being used more than ever, COP28 being presided over by someone who seems to want to continue to sell fossil fuels on a large scale. And by contrast, we are being offered Fortnum and Mason hampers for our dogs and a dog water bottle with a built-in purifier. Sometimes it feels as if everything is going wrong and the world is not a safe or sensible place. We're not the only ones who feel this way. That's how it felt for the early Christians at the time Mark's Gospel was written. About 37 years after Jesus was crucified, there was a revolt against the Romans in Jerusalem. 
and the Romans steamed in and destroyed the city and the temple. There was violence and destruction and people were driven out of their homes. So Mark gathered together in chapter 13 some sayings of Jesus that address this real fear that everything was falling apart and the end of the world was near. The words here try to calm these fears, saying that there was no reason to suppose the world was about to end, and as we know, it didn't, and that there was no point in sitting around trying to work out when the world was going to end and what exactly was going to happen, because that was all in God's hands. Besides, for Christians, the idea of Jesus, the Son of Man, returning was something to be looked forward to, not dreaded. The whole message of this passage was that Christians should not be panicking about what might or might not happen. We, ne we need to be the sane and steady ones, walking forwards with our eyes fixed on Jesus. When big things happen in the world or when even unexpected or sad things happen in our own lives, we have to trust Jesus. God does not make these things happen, but with his help we can learn and grow through them and good can come out of something sad. When we lose a loved one, we are very sad, of course, and often we continue to be sad for a long time. But we can usually look back on happy memories, on good times, on good things that person did. There are no certainties in life and our faith can be shaken when terrible things happen to ourselves, to those close to us or to people in far corners of the world. All we can do is put our trust in God and walk the path he leads us along. It helps to know that we can always see signs of God's love and care in our lives. It is winter now, but we know that spring will come. The reading from Mark mentioned a fig tree. What happens to trees in winter? They lose their leaves and become hard and stiff. But later on, when spring is near, their twigs will become tender and new leaves will come, ready for fruit in the summer. We need to stay alert to look for those signs when things are hard. Often when there is a story of something dreadful happening in the world, there is also the story of the people who go to help. The bravery of the medical staff in Gaza, some Palestinians, others from the UN and Médecins Sans Frontières and other organisations is inspiring. When disaster or war strikes, many of us give money to help people we have never met. So even in these situations, there is some good. Paul iterates this message in the Corinthians reading, that we should be thankful for our faithful God who is with us through thick and thin. As Christians, we need to look for the good in situations, for signs of God's love and power, for signs of hope. At this stage of the Christian year, the beginning of Advent, the sign we are waiting for is the story of a tiny baby being born. The story will unfold over the weeks and we can follow it, appreciating each stage and appreciating the fact that Jesus wanted to be close to us so much so that he became one of us here on earth. There may be times when we feel overwhelmed by the need to prepare for our Christmas celebrations. Auntie Ethel and her sister-in-law don't get on. How are we going to keep them apart? Three of the cousins have suddenly gone vegetarian and we've just bought a massive turkey and the one who isn't vegetarian needs gluten-free. Our brother's just got a new partner. Do we need to buy her a present or not? And did Uncle Fred move during the year? Or was that last year? So have we got the right address for sending his Christmas card? Let's take time out to remember why we're celebrating. We can be thinking prayerfully of the people we're sending cards to and buying presents for. We can take time to read all those Christmas letters and rejoice with those who have good news. 
We can celebrate with our church family. So this Christmas, we can look for signs of good in this troubled world. And most of all, we should keep in our hearts the words of Mark 13, 31. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. And fix our eyes on Jesus, our Saviour. A prayer to end. Lord, the plants in our gardens are bare now as winter is here, but we know it won't be too long before little signs of life burst forth. We acknowledge our barren times, the sadness for the things we have lost. We thank you for the memories, for the comfort and hope you bring us. We commit to you the new things that will surely come, and we pray that we won't be slow to notice these new shoots and that you will water them plentifully with your love. Amen. And so we affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And now our prayers of intercession. Holy God, as we enter Advent, our minds and hearts, hopes and visions turn towards our journey to Christmas and all its promise. Yet we feel overwhelmed and helpless as we see and hear and feel the pain of the Holy Land, Ukraine and Sudan and other places where there is war and unrest. All around the world there seems to be pain and anguish created by greed, destroying the environment and disrupting the climate. While people simply seek peace and calm, home and shelter, food and water. We pray for all who are bereaved, fearful, injured, homeless, hungry or stateless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, our National Health Service in the UK is under so much pressure. Staff and patients are suffering. So many people with illness and injury cannot get the help they need. So many staff not able to give the support and healing they would like to. We pray for all who are on waiting lists and for those who are struggling to help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for those for whom Advent and Christmas will bring little relief from pain or a health condition, remembering particularly Uggy, Mervyn, Siobhan, Kim and Harry, Pam Johnson, Arthur Haywood, Ron Crafer, Mike Jones, Kenneth Bannum, Chris Weeks, Tim Newman, Hilary Capsis, and Jackie and her family as they mourn the loss of her mum. Take a moment to pray for healing and wholeness for those who are on your heart. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, as we unearth our Christmas treasures in our decorations box, we think of those who have nothing to unearth, no happy memories, nothing to pass on. May they find someone and something that gives their, this Advent a meaning and a memory. We think of and pray for those who will be spending their first Christmas without a treasured loved one, for those who will be stepping into Advent with sadness, loneliness and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, bless all we have prayed for, all we have brought to mind, and bless us too as we pray. Amen. And our collect, the special prayer for Advent Sunday. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the world of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us with great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again with glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. And so to our notices, um, thank you for Guy and um, Mike and Sheena who stepped in to help when I couldn't manage last Sunday because I was positive with COVID. So Mike kindly took a baptism and Guy and Sheena took the services at our churches. Thanks too to those who helped when we welcomed our new bishop with a tea party at St Barnabas during the week, especially Caroline and Richard. And to those who helped yesterday, Saturday, with the refreshments after the switching on of the Hadley Nights and community carol singing. The St Barnabas Nativity Festival takes place on Saturday the 9th of December between 10 and 12 noon. So do bring your nativity scene and a note about why it is special to you to St Barnabas or via myself or Catherine um, any time during the week. But also on Saturday morning, Beaten Beans with Linda Jiggins, and that's at St James from 10.30. On Sunday, the 10th of December, at 3 o'clock, Gaudi Amos will be entertaining us in concert at St Barnabas. Our carol services, the first one at St Barnabas at 9.30 on the 10th of December, and then at St James at 11 o'clock on the 17th of December. Messy Church on the 11th of December at St Barnabas from four o'clock with Christmas dinner. And the children from Hadley Juniors are coming to St Barnabas for their nativity play. And they're coming in two lots, one lot from 9.30 to 10.30 and the second bunch from 1.45 to 2.45 on Wednesday the 13th of December. If anyone would like to help just to, to be there and, and to help welcome the children, then do let me know. 
That's Wednesday the 13th of December. Gifts for the homeless to be passed on to Harp can be left at St Barnabas or passed on via myself. Um, hats and gloves, toiletries, little luxuries. I'm all welcome to help homeless people have a slightly better Christmas. The rectory phone is now working. Um, so a chap called Dave came and climbed up the pole and, and fixed it. Um, so you can phone me once more. And full details of our Christmas services and events are on various posters and on the newsletter. Um, so you will know what's going on. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.